I'm going to show you how to do a dot chart, which we're going to sort and then um, color. So in this first one, we're using uh, a data set that comes with our MT cars. And we're going to put uh, in order, we're going to sort by miles per gallon the cars in that. And just so you get a look here, here's what MT cars uh, looks like. Let me do just get the heading of it. And you'll see that it has name of the car in the first column, then miles per gallon cylinders, and uh, which are four, six, and eight, and then so on. We're really going to be looking at just those first three columns right now. So uh, the next thing I have on here, the CB palette, is just a, uh, a colorblind palette that I found online so that uh, people who are colorblind can see the colors that you have in your uh, graphs. Okay, so the next thing I have here is, uh, and the, the X is just the name of the data set, cylinder. I'm going to uh, uh, make that factor. See, we have 6, 4, and 8. Those are numbers. Well, it has to be a factor, so I'm going to say treat those numbers as if they are categories and not numbers. And then I'm going to have for, this says X, I'm going to color something, and I'm going to color from the X data set cylinder equal 4, to this color, whatever that is, the D55E00, which is, I just copied it from the template up here. And then I repeated the same thing for cars that have six cylinders and for cars that have eight cylinders. Actually, I didn't do it. This particular on this page is something I found online, or at least most of it. I can't, uh, not all of it, but a lot of it. So now I'm going to make a graph. I'm just getting rid of the frame. It's a dot, dot chart, miles per gallon, labels equal row names of X. So for the data set, I have the raw, row names like Mazda X, RX4, and so on. So those are going to show up. That I'm going to put labels for each of the row names. And then the CX.7 uh, just changes the size of the letters. And groups are going to be the uh, number of cylinders. And then I just have a, um, the next two things are just main title and X label. Uh, this X limb, you don't even really need that last bit there, and I don't always use it. Uh, and then I'm going to say the colors, the colors that we defined up here is X color, and then the PCH is uh, 16. That's just a plotting character. So let's look and just see what we get from all of this. And that's a pretty nice looking graph. Now you couldn't use this if you had a thousand. Uh, things that you were looking at, but if you had a set of products that you were looking at and they had different characteristics and so on, this is a, a pretty nice little uh, graph. And you can see what you would expect is that, in general, the uh, eight cylinders have the lowest gas mileage, except for there's a little bit of overlap here. Then the six cylinders with a little bit of overlap, and then the four cylinders would have the uh, greatest uh, mileage. Okay, I went on then, and uh, I'm going to show you another data set, and then I'm going to do some stuff with it just to redo those. And what I have here is just a movie data set, and it has a rating in terms of the Rotten Tomato score. You've probably seen that on online. It's uh, They give ratings of movies from 0 to 100. And then it has some other things uh, that we could look at, but I'm going to look at uh, the box office gross, how much money the movie uh, made, and its rating, and then the name of the movie. Since I have so many of them here, what I did was I sorted by rating. Um, and I'm going to sort from top down. And so what I did was I took in my first data set just the movies that were had a score of 80 or better, so it would be those. And I put that into another file and then saved it and I called it movie 80 plus rating and then I have that ready to read here and then the x equals now I'm putting things 
my, I call my data set DAT, so I put DAT in order DAT box office gross, so that's my quantitative variable. The color blindness stuff stays the same. And then my uh, MPAA is uh, is the rating of the movies, which would be things like G, PG-13, R, unrated, and PG. I also did a box plot here. And then we went it down here. The dot chart is box office gross. Labels equal uh, the movie, the name of the movie that was in the uh, data set. And then uh, the MPAA, again, is your categorical variable, the uh, rating of the movie in terms of G and PG and so on. And here we go. I'm going to just run that. Yeah. Get all this where I can see it. And you can see I didn't put the limits on it this time, the X lim thing. And there we have it, some movies, and uh, we can look and see it. Now these are movies that are, have a Rotten Tomato score of at least 80. And you can, if you look down at the bottom here, uh, the unrated I'm not going to worry too much about, but the R ratings, and you had up to here. And look, as compared to the ones that have PG-13, PG, and G, there's almost like a it, nothing beyond that level. And that could mean that just that's true of only of these ratings, or it could mean that, you know, because we restrict our audience, that you have to be a certain age to go to an R-rated movie. You can't get above a certain um, point. And so, there we are. That would be one way to look at this. Now, what I next did, or the next thing that I did, was now I went and created another data set, but this time of movies that had ratings of 69 to 70. And uh, let's say, uh, I'm going to call that medium rated movies. I don't know if that's a good name or not. And uh, I'm going to put uh, Rotten Tomato. 60 to 79 on that. And I'm going to highlight that, and we'll see what happens now with those. And you can see I called it DAT1 um, here and here because it's my new data, and just the 60 to 79 ratings. And there we have it. And you kind of see the same thing here, that the R-rated movies, they get up to a certain point, and they don't have anything in these... Uh, higher level uh, movies, the highest rating movies, it looks like here about the top 10 in that rating are above the highest rating for uh, for anything that was R rating. So that might tell you a little bit about why uh, movies, I guess, fight so hard uh, to make sure that their ratings are as low as possible and they'd rather have a PG-13 rating than an R rating because it could have a big impact on how much money the, uh, the movie makes.